I have been able to speak at the Utah State Prison four times now, twice on the men's side and twice on the women's side, and I am forever changed by it. I've been to some really incredible and beautiful places, meeting literally hundreds of great people a day sometimes, and, you know, they all had different stories and backgrounds and challenges and successes, all that have had some sort of impact on me. And yet, when I went to the prison to speak, March of 2013, it has still been my absolute favorite place I had ever been. And I'll share a little bit of what I wrote in my personal journal from my first time going there on the men's side back in 2013. I wrote, I can't express what I felt. The spirit that I felt was beyond what I had felt before. It was incredibly powerful. I didn't want to leave and lose how I felt. I was surprised by their example. They all came single filed into the gym, all wearing their matching white inmate uniforms. And every single one of them were holding a Book of Mormon and a journal on their own will. Their humble eyes staring at me was completely captivating. After I spoke, I was able to stay as they separated into groups and my eyes just filled with tears as I heard their goals and their desires. Hearing their passion to just get out and go to church And, or they can, um, baptize their son or get sealed to their family. And to hear investigators quote DNC more beautifully than I had ever heard before. I was truly among incredible, incredible people. And I was so humbled to meet them. When it was time to leave, a lot of them thanked me and they shook my hand. And you know how sometimes you can just look at someone, you just know that they're truly a great person, like You could just feel it. I saw that and I felt that. Every single eye I looked into, it moved me. It moved me to literal tears and it moved me to change, to become better because of their example and greatness that I saw in them. That's what I wrote. When I went back to the men's side this past month, it was a little different. I was, um, it was for a drug addiction program graduation, a challenge that I'm not familiar with myself. And not only was I told that I couldn't speak on not just my religion, but I couldn't even mention God at all. And that was incredibly difficult for me. I spoke on change. The road to becoming better most times seems to get longer and longer with more rocks and bumps and holes and detours than we could have ever imagined. But what seems to be roadblocks and detours along the way are actually paths that we don't recognize at first that leads us to places we never would have thought of, leading us to do things we never would have dreamed of, all of which are better than what we initially had in mind. And through those paths I have taken to become better and to become more, I truly felt like I found me, who I was meant to be all along with blessings that are profoundly better than what I even knew existed and was available for myself. I wouldn't have a single thing I have now if it weren't for God and his ways. And although my second time back to the prison was not a religious service in any degree, and was definitely not an LDS service, there was a one-time choir of inmates that was just for this occasion. They got up to sing, and I was completely shocked at their choice of song. It was... A child's prayer. The most intimidating men you could imagine, like these big, tall, buff men, like all ages from 20s up till, I don't know, maybe their 70s, some with missing most of their teeth, and most of them with tattoos on their face and on their head, and they all started singing. Heavenly Father, are you really there? (sighs) I sat on their makeshift stage, and I lost. The spirit overwhelmed me so physically more than I had ever felt before in my entire life. Because God was there. Because regardless of where they were and whatever they had done, he was aware of them. And they were not alone. And I felt so powerfully that they never have been. And neither are we. The power of change is very real. And although there are many people in prison who do not make the decision to change to become better, we all have that decision. 
We all have the power to change because people change every day. I'm not who I was six years ago. The group I spoke to at the prison, they're not who they used to be. They were full of greatness. I could feel it. And I'm changed and I'm better because of it. We can never let who we used to be stop us from who we can become. Maybe one day I won't be known as the tattooed Mormon. But maybe the fun Mormon. Or the really nice Mormon. Or the Mormon convert. I don't know. Or hopefully one day just the Mormon with a strong testimony. Who loves the Lord. Trying to help people. To help people know that the power of love The power and love of Christ and Heavenly Father is so powerful that we can overcome absolutely every trial, every hardship, that their love for us can literally allow us to overcome uh, the world. Every passing minute is a chance to turn it all around, a fresh start, because every passing minute, Christ is there for us to help people know and to feel that happiness does exist. Comfort and guidance is always available, and what we are part of This, this, what we are part of, this is real. This is so real and it is so great. It is. This is the greatest thing we can ever be a part of. Forget not why you are here. Forget not whose hands you're in.